Hey friend, it's me Vasco with a quick announcement. We at the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast are organizing this year's Scrum Master Summit. For tickets and details on the summit, check out the URL bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. All one word S-M-S-U-M-M-I-T 22. And now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday, Success Thursday, this week with Julie Wyman. Hi, Julie. Welcome back. Thanks. So, Julie, on Thursdays, we talk about success and what that means for us as Scrum Masters. But uh, because, of course, you love retros, we also (laughs) want to know what's your favorite retrospective format and why? This one is obviously hard because I think retros are so important. And so I think it's really, to me, the like, thing about retros is is about mixing it up and is about picking something that's uh going to tap into like that moment in time right so it's it's about mixing it up so that you kind of evoke different emotions and just get people thinking differently cuz what i usually tell people i work with is we are ultimately always more or less asking the same question but it does matter kind of how you prompt it and the way you the way you phrase it you may get a different response. Your team is different, right? So when I work with different teams, I have to think about how are they going to respond? Some are more creative. Some are more just like, give it to me straight. I want to mix it up for everyone. And so I, I generally follow the, the format laid out in Agile Retrospectives where I try to find, right, an opener and, and gather the data and generate insights and figure out what to do. So I always kind of try to find a quick activity for all of those phases. but. One thing that I like to do kind of with every team that I work with at some point, and this is not like a a retro, you'd have to use it at the right point in time. So is it my favorite randomly? No, because you'd have to, you have to pick the right time. But, but why I say it is because I think it's often overlooked. So I call it the working agreement report card. And that's because I think we often form working agreements or team norms. And then they, we say they're living documents, but they sort of, just go off. They never really, like, we never really revisit them. And so I think retros can be a really great time to actually come back to it and engage with it on some some regular frequency. One, because we've likely had some new team members join, some because our team needs may have changed, and also just to actually, like, check in on ourselves. If we really think it's important, but we're not doing so well at it, why is that? And what kind of commitment do we want to make? So Oftentimes, I just pull our working agreement and I just say, treat it like a report card. Give ourselves a letter grade for these different things, right? How well are we doing at it? And then also, Mark, do you think we should keep doing it, like revise it, or that we don't need it anymore? And so that, to me, is a way to really keep it relevant. And it's something that is kind of internally focused, which I think every once in a while is really important to the team. And it's something that is also fully in control. So if we've also had a few retros in a row where the team was just coming up with things that felt very out of their control and we kept coming up with actions that were like influence, but they didn't have full control over. It's also a great retro to come to if you just want to be like, we have full control over like the working agreements that we need to be together. And also uh, another thing like following up from that, another thing that it helps with is the the barnacles of our working agreements because there's a lot of stuff that just gets added and it's never cleaned and then the work agreements kind of they lose the essence they lose the coherence that they used to have when they were created by us for us rather than by the events as they unfolded without our at least in some cases even deliberate understanding so uh, i think it's also a great way to keep the working agreements relevant Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and a lot of times like things have changed. So any team that formed a working agreement pre-March 2020, if they haven't revisited it, their working agreement is probably very irrelevant right now. Well said. Well <laughs> said. So this is going out, what, two and a half years after the pandemic? So <laughs> if you haven't changed your working agreements at least a couple of times in the last two and a half years, that, that's a bad sign. All right, cool. So now we talk about why we do retros in the first place, which is, of course, to help us succeed in our role as Scrum Master. So Julie, share with us, what's your definition of success for you as a Scrum Master? To me, what does success look like? I kind of think about like, what, what, does, what does it look like 
for the team if they have a successful Scrum Master. So to me, I, I think that it means that the team is continuously improving and innovating. So that means like, is the team experimenting and trying new approaches, even if they already seem like they're generally successful? The counter would be, you know, they, they have frequently stale retros, that there's infrequent experimentation, that they have steady delivery, they're constantly meeting their sprint goals, but there's no focus on improvement. They're just kind of content to just like stay there. So to me, that's, you know, a successful Scrum Master has kind of instilled this mindset in the team that's like self-sustaining of continuously improving and innovating. Another is that there's psychological safety. So does the team self-report as experiencing psychological safety, high levels of engagement, morale? Is candid feedback being freely shared amongst all team members? And is psychological safety actually like maybe even improving somewhat at levels beyond the team? Like the team is actually modeling and maybe influencing slightly the larger organization. The the opposite, so like if if you're not, you know, succeeding in that area, is that you might not see much feedback or you might see unequal feedback, right? That only someone who's in a maybe, you know, perceived position of hierarchy is providing feedback, but not like vice versa, that there's low safety or that there's safety within the team, but there's low safety outside of the team. And so then the team has this unwillingness to actually share their real concerns and impacts beyond the team out of fear. So like those would be symptoms that there's low psychological safety. I think the Scrum Master obviously can't control safety like at the level of the entire organization, but they have a role to play definitely amongst the team and in brokering like the team's relationship kind of at some of those next levels of how they interact. Absolutely. And that's actually one of the parts that protect the team mean in my mind, right? Like it, it's helped the team create the psychological safety they need within the team, but also getting that in interaction with other stakeholders like the product owner, their managers, potentially even users or customers uh, of their product. These are uh, great reminders and uh, definitely something to put our, on our success checklist. So thank you for that, Julie. Yeah, absolutely. Hey friends, it's Vasco again, now with a bit longer announcement. I'm part of the team that is behind the Global Scrum Master Summit, the conference dedicated to the Scrum Master role. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is the place to learn, to share, and of course, to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from the whole globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. We have several amazing key notes and seven tracks that feature people like you and of course thought leaders sharing their insights their knowledge and helping you become an awesome scrum master you can check out all of the details of the summit including the keynotes announced the track chairs and much more at bit.ly forward slash sm summit 22 that's all one word that's bit.ly forward slash sm s-u-m-m-i-t and the numeral two two i'll see you on the conference floor